Canada may not be a superpower, but we do have our global influence. I've come to Iceland to interview Eliza Reid. She's Iceland's first lady and a Canadian. What's it like for a Canadian to be the head of state of a foreign country? I'm going to work from sunup to sundown to find out. A total of three hours. Eliza Jean Reid, you have the most pronounceable name in Iceland. <laughs> most Canadians dream of moving away somewhere warmer, but you chose Iceland. I did. I came here for love. Right. Our names were drawn together to go on a blind date. Most times people go on a blind date, half and half could be a serial killer. You ended up getting a, a future uh, president of Iceland. Indeed. Your husband was a, a, a history professor, mm -hmm. a political pundit on television, beloved by fishermen. Basically, you married Icelandic Rex Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> well... <laughs> you and your husband, you're both sort of the same age as the Trudeaus. You have mm -hmm. children roughly the same ages. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, are there any other similarities between you and, say, Sophie Gregoire Trudeau? Do you ever force people to listen to you sing? <laughs> I haven't yet. <laughs> mm -hmm. Not yet? How many selfies does your husband take in the run of a day? Quite a few. Yeah? <laughs> he might give Justin a run for his money. Wow. Or certainly on a per capita basis. <laughs> That's Iceland right. always wins in per yeah, capita yeah, statistics. Yeah. Bjork, are there many Bjork sightings? I guess people ask you about this all the time. There so are. So like the Sasquatch of Iceland, did I, you see a, a Bjork? I like, I like to say it's a little bit like you know you've arrived in Iceland when you've had your first Bjork sighting. I read this and I thought, this must be wrong. That your husband translated four Stephen King books into Icelandic? True, that is true. Man, those short days really get to you. Yeah. You know, he needed money, he was young, and lots of, lots of work to that's do. Like, that's that like sounds a, like a bad excuse for many things. No, that's the, uh, that's the best, uh, he needed money, so he, that I've ever heard. Normally, <laughs> yeah. that's a lot worse yeah, so than true. I translated so Stephen translate King books into Iceland. <laughs> okay. Now, your husband did cause one sort of an international incident, I guess, between Canada and Iceland uh, accidentally, the, the uh, pineapple gate. He was up in a town in the north and was invited to try pizza and said a definitive no to the Hawaiian version because he said, I don't want the pineapple on the pizza. I hate pineapple on pizza. If it were up to me, I would just ban it. And uh, people thought that he really meant that you should ban pineapple on pizza. It's the kind of thing that is, can be quite divisive, actually, because everybody has an opinion on it, pineapple on pizza. Including the Prime Minister That's of right. Canada, Justin Trudeau, and he tweeted. He, he tweeted with Team Pineapple. And I, I do confess, although I love my adopted homeland, I also like pineapple on pizza a lot. How would you compare Icelandic cuisine to uh, Tim Horton's chili, for example, or KD, <laughs> our national dish? I, well, I, I'm going to confess that I've never had Tim Horton's chili. I... And we're done. No, you've never had Tim Horton's chili? But no. Is it really that good? No, it's not. I have introduced Kraftner to my children, and they like it, and I like it. Uh, what do Icelanders think about Canada, or are they like everybody yeah. else in the world and they just don't know we're there? No, Iceland really likes Canada. Yeah? It's a very positive impressions of Canada here, definitely. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Don't have a full 22 minutes to spare? Watch our show in small, hilarious chunks here and subscribe to our all-new channel below.